Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we can create a flyout modern form for Power Apps. So stay tuned. So very first thing that we need to understand, what is flyout form? So if you guys using SharePoint Online or Modern SharePoint, and if you go to any of the list, like I am showing right now, this work progress tracker, and if you click on any of the item, you see that from the right hand side, there is a panel that displaying all the information. So this is what I'm calling flyout form. It is a panel form that open on the same screen on which you are and display all the information. And from here, you can edit all the information as needed. So what we're gonna learn today how we can create something like this in Power Apps. So let me take you to an app where I have already built this flyout form and let me show you how this looks like. So this is my app. And as you can see here, this app is connected to the same workflow progress tracker. So all the item listed here is showing in my app. Now notice if I'm gonna click on any of the item, I'm actually displaying the same information like SharePoint was displaying in the panel form or the flyout form. From here, I can edit this information easily and I can save. And as soon as you save, you see the information has been updated. I can also click on new and it will open up the new form so I can create a new entry. Now, let me show you how you can create something like this. But before that, why we even need it? So if you take an example of approach of creating a operational power apps where we have to create multiple form generally what we do we create a power app add our gallery or the item display on one screen then we create another screen in which we add the form and then we transition from our gallery screen to the form screen whenever someone want to create an item or delete it or maybe add it an item so instead of that we're going to use just one screen use this panel approach and have our form available there as a flyout, just one form for creating a new item or maybe editing the same item or displaying or viewing the same item in that form, okay? So let's create one app, okay? So this is my empty app, nothing in it. First thing that we need, we need the data, right? So I'm gonna connect to my SharePoint data. And this is my list the work progress tracker. So let's connect to that list. So now I have created a connection to my data source. So let me go back to my screen and let's start adding the first thing as a rectangle on this screen for the app header. So this will be my app header. And in this header, I need a label that's going to display the name of my app and one image. This image I will use to display the logged in user picture. So if you know, in Power App, we get a user object that give us the image. So I'm gonna use that. Okay, so I created this quick header here. So I'm displaying the picture of the logged in user and the name of the form. The next thing that we need, we need a gallery that will display the data from that uh, SharePoint list. And the data is going to be our connected SharePoint list. And I'm just gonna set this to title and subtitle because we don't have picture there, okay? So as you can see here, uh, it's displaying all those different item. Now we added the gallery that displaying the information. What we're gonna do, we're gonna drop a form on this screen directly. So I'm gonna just drop a form. And then the data source for this form is again the same list that we have created or using in this app. And the item of this form is going to be the gallery that we have. So we have gallery one dot selected. Okay, so that's going to be the item of this form. So now we have a form and we have a gallery, but again, it's not looking as expected. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make some changes to the form itself. So first thing that you need to make change in the form is the background color. So instead of using this transparent, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the color value function and use the white color okay so now as you can see here my form is displaying all the information but still it's not fully functional so before we move forward let's do one more thing 
reduce the height of this form a little bit because we need a header on this form to operate with this form. So what we're going to do, we're going to drop another rectangle here just to add a header for this form and enable the border and then also give a color to the border. This is just for the styling. Now let's make some uh, UI related updates. So for this rectangle that we have added, the X for this label. So whatever the form one dot X, that's going to be the X for this. So this is the X for this rectangle, right? And and the by of this rectangle is going to be the rectangle one dot height. So that's going to be the height. And the next is width. So width of this rectangle is going to be the form dot width. So whatever the width of this form is going to be the width of this rectangle or the header. Okay, so we added this header and we applied some uh, X and Y so it will remain at the position. Now on this header, let's add some icons. So we're going to add one icon for save. So this is my save icon. So whenever user will click on this particular icon, whatever data in this form, it will submit back to the SharePoint and will save. It. We also need one cancel or the icon. So this is the cancel icon. Whenever someone is going to click on this icon, this form should close. And the last one that we need is the edit. So whenever someone click on this edit icon, the form should be editable. So we need these three icons on this form. And we will update what should happen on click of each event, right? So now we added this header, we added our form. The next, we, what we need, Number one, this form should not be displayed all the time. Whenever user click on a particular item, then only this form should be displayed. So for that, let's go to our gallery on select. And what we are going to do here, we're going to set a variable called show form. And we're going to update or change or reset this variable on click event. And we will use this variable or the visible property of the form. Whenever this variable is true, we are going to display this form, else we will not. Similarly for all of these header. So now, as you can see, now if I play this app, and if I click on an item, and you can see our form is displaying. If I click back, the form will go away. Okay, so this is pretty cool. It's working as expected. Now, if you look at this, it's still not really making that effect what you see in this, either in my app, or in the SharePoint, right? So for that, what we need to do, we need to use an image that can do that reflection. So let's drop an image here. Okay, so this is my image. Now, we're gonna just set some property for this image so it will always remain at the right location. And we will start with the X position of this one. So the X position of this image should be the whatever the form X minus 10. And why I'm doing this minus, I'll let you know. We're going to use a shadow image or an SVG image for this purpose. And of course, I'm going to share that SVG with you all so you can use it when you're creating something like this. Okay. So the X is form.x minus 10. So the Y of this image should be the rectangle one. That's our header rectangle dot height minus 15. So that should be the Y of this image. The next, what we need is the width of this image. So the width of this image should be the form width plus 15. And I'm adding these uh, these different padding or the buffer because the SVG image that we're gonna use, is it has that shadow effect. And I can show you that quickly in my app. So if you see this, this, this image, there is an image behind this form and it had the shadow effect. So we need to make sure that image had enough buffer so that the shadow should be displayed. Okay. The, another thing is the height. So the height of this image should be app.active screen. So that's the screen height minus my header. So that is our rectangle one. That's the header of this image dot height. Right. And then we're going to add the buffer of 30. So now the image is ready but it doesn't have any image yet. So for that, let me go to the image property of this one. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy paste the SVG code for the shadow image. And for this SVG, I would like to thank 
R3 Day Cap because he had really nice uh, article about this in the component a gallery of power community and I, I really appreciate his uh, contribution. Okay, so I have this image. I made some changes on the, the height and width because to match the need that we have. So now as you can see, as soon as I added that shadow, the effect you can see is visible. So now this image should also be visible only when the form variable is set to the show form. Okay, so let me play that. Now you can see that experience of a fly out form is pretty much there. And also the last thing that you need to make sure, you need to make sure this image is always stay behind the form. Okay, so now our form is ready. We need to make it functional, right? Because right now it's not really functional. For example, if I'm going to click on this icon, this icon, this icon, nothing is going to happen. So before that, let's set a variable on click event or on select event of this gallery. So I'm going to set another variable called set variable form mode, right? And what we are going to pass in this variable that what should be the mode of this form when someone click on this gallery. So we want this to be open as a view form, right? So we can select form mode dot view. And we are going to use this variable in our form properties. And in the form property, we have default mode. So click on that and we are going to use this variable, right? So whenever someone is going to click on this gallery, the form will open as a view only. But when, if someone click on this edit, then what we need on select this one, we want this form to be added form. So we're going to set that variable again. And this time we're going to say the form mode should be added. And on cancel, when someone click on this cancel, we want this form to be hidden, right? So on select of this cancel, we are going to set that variable show form to false. Pretty simple, right? And the last thing that we need, we need this checkbox. So whenever someone click on this checkbox, the form should be submit. So on select, we are just going to submit form and the form is form two, right? So we are all done. Let's see how this works now. So now if I'm going to click and as you can see here, now my form is opening as the view only. But if I click on this pencil icon or edit icon, now my form is displaying as an edit form and I can click on this checkbox. So now if you notice the form actually submitted, but we are not doing anything if the form is submitted successfully or if there is an error. So for that on the form itself, there is a property called on success. And if the form submitted successfully, what we're going to do, we're going to set the variable show form to false. Because as soon as I click on checkbox, if everything, all the data that we have on this form is correctly provided, and if item has been updated or created, I want this form to be closed. So now if I go here and if I edit and I change the priority from medium to critical and click on save button, it's done. And now if I go back and as you can see here, the property has changed, so it's working. Now, what about creating a new item from here? So for that, let's drop an add icon on the top. The logic is very simple. Now, the only thing that you want when someone click on this plus icon, what you need, you can guess, uh, you need to set the variable form mode to the, yes, you're right, new. So this time what we are saying that this time the form mode should be new and variable show form now let's play this one now as you can see now my form is opening as an empty form so i can create a new item so let's create a new item here complete demo app Oops. i start date assigned to i can search for myself and now i'm going to click on check mark and you can see that new item is created immediately right so you can see your item created here now if i click on this one all the information that I provided listed here. I can again edit this detail as needed. I can change this from design to maybe engineering, save it, and you have all the information saved. 
Yeah, so that's it. So this is how quickly you can create these flyout form or the panel form in Power App. Now, because this form is functioning, you can create a new item, you can edit the existing item. Let me show you one more good thing about this uh, approach. So now you can see the form is here. I can change the layout without making any more update to the app. I can go from two column to three column and let me go and show you in the edit. So as you can see here, now if I go to the form, I can go from vertical to horizontal and all this information is automatically going to align as needed. I can also update the fields or let's say I don't want the attachment to be there. I can quickly do that and this form is automatically going to adjust accordingly. So yeah, give a try and let me know if you like this video. Of course, do not forget to subscribe because that's how you're going to get to know the next video that I'm going to create. So yeah, thank you very much for listening.